Hello guys and welcome to Crash Course World History and today we'll be talking about one of the most powerful armies of all time. I'm talking about, wait for it, the Mongols. At first the Mongols were nomadic herders, traveling long distances with their sheep, goats, and horses. They were accustomed to living in the harsh environments of northern Asia and they were always on the move. For centuries, the Mongols were separated into separate clans. Each was led by a Khan. But soon, all those many clans will be united into one by one man. A Khan by the name of Temujin started conquering other tribes and uniting them under one. Temujin was successful in uniting the clans and took on a new name we all know and love, Genghis Khan, meaning universal ruler. The Mongols, now united under Genghis Khan, then set out to build one of the greatest empires in history the Mongol Empire. The Mongols were extremely good warriors. They were experts on horseback and extreme mark marksmen with the bow and arrow. They were also extremely disciplined and loyal fighters. Please hold for some never before seen footage from inside the yurt of Genghis Khan. Alright ladies, another day, another village to conquer. Here's the plan. We're sending squads of three out to the front of the fortress. These dimwits are gonna think that's all we brought, but we have another plan. We have a sneak attack from the cavalry, and come play it. They're all dead, debated, easy claps. Now, if they have a sliver of intelligence and realize that we are the Mongols and that their puny fortress is nothing, then we'll go with plan B. Alright, we'll pick up some of those Chinese engineers we, pick, we got a few villages ago, and we'll have them create these giant siege machines. Okay, we'll take a giant rock and fly it at their fortress and break in, send our troops in, and come at them! They're all dead! Jump aided! Now, if there's a 0.01% chance this doesn't work at all, we have backups. We have prisoners as meat shields? That might be a contender. Plague bodies over the wall. Hmm. We should save that for Europe. The time to attack has come. We surrender! Thanks to the military might of the Mongols and Genghis Khan's leadership, the Mongols were very successful in their conquests. Genghis Khan conquered more than twice as much land as any other person in history. Upon his death, the empire was it's not just big, it's huge! Stretching from the Sea of Japan to the Caspian Sea. Unfortunately, he had to kill a lot of people to get to this point. It is approximated that 40 million people were killed in the Mongol conquests, the second most death to World War II. But the Mongols didn't kill everyone. Usually the Mongols killed the aristocrats and opposing soldiers, and kept the craftspeople and skilled workers to build their empire. Those who expected Genghis Khan to govern the way he made war were surprised. The period of the Mongol Empire was a peaceful time. The social policies of Genghis Khan were liberal for the day. He was religiously tolerant, architecture thrived. Instead of using his soldiers to prepare for war, he used them to protect the Silk Road, making trade safer. Those who survived the conquest of the Mongols benefited very much from this new trade. But the Mongol Empire was so large. How did everything stay in order across such a large land area? Let's go to the Thought Bubble. The Mongols formed a relay system through their messengers. These messengers would ride across the empire to deliver messages. They would eat, drink, and even sleep on horseback. The messengers would stop at outposts throughout their journey to refuel themselves and get a fresh horse. They would identify themselves as messengers using a unique badge, allowing them to receive supplies. 
This thought bubble is brought to you by Diet Coke, the tastiest drink out there that contains no calories or sugar. Side effects may include cavities, dementia, heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. Please do not drink Diet Coke if you're allergic to Diet Coke. Thank you. This system was known as the YAM system and proved most effective, allowing for easy communication across the empire. Easy communication was key for the success of the Mongol Empire. Let's see what's in the secret compartment. Ah yes, the symbol of the Yan Dynasty. And there's a letter on the back. Let's see. It says, a letter to one of Genghis Khan's successors, to Kublai Khan. Your death led to the decline of the Mongol Empire. The empire stopped expanding and became weaker due to your dynasty. So basically, you led to the decline of the, one of the most prosperous and peaceful empires of all time. So thank you, Kublai Khan, for screwing it up. Sincerely, John Green. Although the Mongol Empire collapsed in the late 1300s, the Mongols still had a lasting impact on the world. The Mongols reinvigorated the Silk Road, promoting trade and transfer of ideas and cultures between Europe and Asia. Goods, religion, and ideas were transmitted, but also disease. And I'm not, not talking about just any disease, the Black Plague. ended up killing one-third of the entire population. The Mongols also caused the end of the knights in armor, as the Mongols' quick and light fighting strategy was no match for them. Finally, the Mongols' expansion led to the end of the walled city, as they proved ineffective against the Mongols' catapults and siege machines. Thanks for watching Crash Course World History. We'll see you guys next week. What? We go ah! Mongols, come into a village near you. <laughs>